If you think of a shift, not too many people are doing over 100 a day in a shift. The bigger practices, it's a bit harder with multiple docs, but not individually. So I want you to take personal responsibility here. If you're an associate in the practice, it's not the practice's responsibility to talk about these people. It's your responsibility. <laughs>
they are, I don't even, like, listen, Kelly and them were still working, and Megan and the whole team were still working till like 11, 12 o'clock last night, and they were here at 7 in the morning, right? But now at the end of the shift, we are tired. Tomorrow, we're going to be tired. 3 o'clock, we've given a lot of energy, and the temptation is to pack up and get the hell out of here. But we always do a debrief huddle. And we typically go, what worked, what didn't work, and we go slowly, and it doesn't matter who's waiting for me or what's happening, I've never missed one of those, except for when I was going to like Thailand or something on holiday. I'm just kidding. But I've never missed one of those. We sit and we do, and we plan, and we say what worked, what didn't work, and we've got admin to do. So a, a chiropractic shift is busy. When you're serving, you're serving. It's hard to do lots of admin, yes or yes? So another thing about it, a busy chiropractic uh, shift needs choreography, needs choreography. So what I mean, you actually have to plan the shift. Let me go through what I recommend you talk about. So I recommend scanning every single name, right? Who has a birthday? Who hasn't been in for a while? Uh, I know that we, the lights are fine, you can see. Who hasn't been in for a while? Who missed the last appointment? Who is a flight risk? What's a flight risk? What's a flight risk? Who has, you know, who missed an appointment that has no future appointment booked? Who's been complaining that they're not getting better for a while? Who is saying things like, I'm not sure this is working for me? That's a flight risk. That means we need to communicate that as a team, and we have to maybe pull that person in a room, help educate them, help be there for them. Maybe they just need, maybe they're going through a tough period, and they just need an extra ear to listen to. Does that make sense? Yes? But we want to talk about our clients. We want to talk about our patients. Who's struggling? Okay, other things to talk about. Who's having personal challenges? Whose mom's passed away? Who's had a challenge in the business? Who's, whatever it is. We do that in our own business, and we're not always going to get it right, but we try. Everyone say we try. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see more content like this, please do me a favor. Just smash that like button, comment down below, or subscribe, and make sure you turn your notifications on so you can see more content just like this. Okay. Now, the thing is, before you go, wow, it's a lot of people to talk about. Not really. If you think of a shift, not too many people are doing over 100 a day in a shift. The bigger practices, it's a bit harder with multiple docs, but not individually. So I want you to take personal responsibility here. If you're an associate in the practice, it's not the practice's responsibility to talk about these people. It's your responsibility. Everyone say yes. yes. It's your patience. Yes or yes? Okay, and CAs, by the way, I don't know if you knew this, doctors are pretty shit at organization. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you call chiropractic angels for a reason. For a reason, yes or yes? yes. So help them help themselves, because they can barely tie their shoes in the morning. <laughs> doctors, true or true? So all the chiropractors and, and, and practitioners in the room, raise your hands if you like help from your team. And keep your hands up if you need them. Yes, you, we need you. All the, all the practitioners and doctors in the room say we need you. We need you to help us save us from ourselves because we are shit at most things. You guys understand, yes? There's a reason that some of the most, most successful chiropractors on the planet have their significant other right next to them. A wife, a partner, a husband. Because we just suck alone. We suck. We get like, we get, uh, what's it, lead singeritis. You know, we think we have everything, but we are damn good when we've got someone with us. How, here's the thing. Look people, if I say, look people now. If you can look people in the eye and you can be present and you can ha have a team around you, but don't, you can't expect your team to just run after you and know what to do. You have to actually plan. Everyone say preach. preach. That's what you've got to do. You guys with me, yes? You've got to plan this stuff. It doesn't just happen, right? So you've got to choreograph the shift, visualize the shift almost. So what does that mean? That means we're planning for busy periods. You may have three reports, or you may have two, uh, a report of finding that's coming out straight into a set where Dr. Jonathan is adjusting five, seven across. So he's coming straight out of the a report of findings. So the team's going to go, hey, I'm going to bring Mary out. Now, let me just warn you, Mary likes to talk. So I'm scared I'm going to run late. OK, 
okay? It might be Jordan who likes to talk. But Mary likes to talk. I might be running late. And I'm going to have seven to ten people waiting to get adjusted. So when I come out, please can you make sure you are ready and waiting because I've got to hand off Mary really fast so I can go and serve. That's literally what you talk about. You guys with me, yes? It's like before the, the, the choreography around the um, beach balls. It didn't just happen. It was like, a, hey, how are we going to do this? Make sure you blow them up at this time. Then when I get them all to stand, I'm going to play some music. And when I say this, open up the things and get the things out. Have five this side and five that side. You guys just think that, the bo that, that it just came out. No. I was an anal weirdo. You guys with me, yes? That's what you have to be like in your practice. It's a choreography. Choreography, the whole thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a play almost, right? So those are things that you work on. New patients. Okay, where did they come from? Are they a referral? Who referred them? Why would you not talk about that in the huddle? Okay, reports. Potential outcomes. Even a plan or pre-booking or scheduling. You might have already said, just so you know, I've already spoken to Mary about her needing long-term chiropractic care, and she's already, her husband is already getting adjusted three times a week, so there's a good chance she's going to be on three times a week. So when I, when I bring her out, please be ready for a similar type of schedule, and please make sure you take the time to try organize her schedule the same time as her husband. That's all good information to know before the shift starts. That's what we're talking about. Just take a little bit more time to talk about every single person. Finances, big one. Who is coming up to the end of a care plan? Who hasn't paid, potentially? Who walked out last time and just said, I forgot my wallet and never came back? Ever happened to anyone else in this? All happened before, yes. Who was that? So we just talk about those things. We scan every name. We choreograph the shift, we plan for busy periods, we talk about the new patient's report of findings and finances. That's, and then a big one that I grew up learning from, uh, who in this room has heard of CJ Mertz? Okay, CJ Mertz, right? I got to meet him recently and I was like, I was a little bit, aw I was a little bit awestruck. So CJ was probably one of the first super coaches in chiropractic, had rooms of two, 3,000 people like this in the room. I'm not joking, he rode on stage once on a horse. <laughs> I'm not joking. He actually rode on stage with a horse once. And he was in the room. I was speaking at an event. And he came to me afterwards. And I'm like, he's like, hey, my name's CJ Burris. I'm like, dude, I know you are. Um, and he was like, hey, man, I need help. Wow, the chiropractic market has changed. New patients, new patients, new patients. Dude, what is going on there? So the great CJ Mertz came to me and was like, dude, what is going on? It has changed. The game has changed. And by the way, less so here in the UK, but in the United States, I live in a place called Sarasota now, and on one street called Clark Street, there's 13 chiropractors on one street. You can throw a baseball and hit four. So when you, comp like I did a mastermind recently in Orlando, not a single doc in the room was getting more than two new patients a week. They're all there to get help. Please help me, please help me, please help me. How many of you are seeing more than two new patients a week at the moment? You're blessed. You're living in the land of milk and honey when it comes to chiropractic. I believe that from a, from a European slash UK perspective, you're in the spit zone, sorry. Uh, but <laughs> it's very COVID appropriate, eh? <laughs> so, so I believe that. I, moving to America has made me really go, wow, you guys are blessed. We're blessed to run businesses here. You can't, you can't put in a Facebook ad in, 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 in North America and get 14 new patients. Not possible. You spend five, six, seven thousand dollars a month, and you get three. Yeah, everyone say we're blessed. Okay, so but this is the one thing: if you want to grow a practice, you've got to talk about the referrals. So, what I talk about referral opportunities. Referral opportunities. On, um, John's getting adjusted today. He's been talking about his wife that's struggling a long time. Please write her name down. Her name is Mary. What's her name, please? I, I don't actually do that to my CAs, but but <laughs> imagine. But like, what's her name? Good, let's go through it. And then can you please ask, go, when John walks out, give him a referral card to say, hey, can you please give this to Mary? Dr. Ryan's asked me to do this. Now, they've got to notice you notice. Write that sentence down. They've got to notice you notice. You will go very far in service-based business if they notice you notice. And what I mean by that is literally, wow, Dr. Ryan said, please give this to your wife, Mary. You've been talking about her. Huh, I was spoken about. I was spoken about before the shift. That's important. 
Okay, that's important.